Governor, welcome to Washington. Of course, Senator, Senator, you uh, are here all the time. Um, but why are you here down on the memorial this morning? Uh, I'm here to uh, hopefully help uh, show the veterans that America's heart for our veterans is immeasurable. And we think it's atrocious that our military is being used as political pawns in a political game. And uh, we're going to change that. And we appreciate these guys who are the good guys in the Senate picking up the fight for us. But uh, there are a few things that we can do to show our support, and that's why I'm here. Senator Lee? This belongs to the people, and we're here to show our solidarity with them, and that this is not a tool to be used against them in a political fight. This is theirs. Senator Cruz. Our veterans should be above politics. Uh, it, it is shameful that the administration is barricading and trying to shut down the memorials. Weeks ago, the House of Representatives passed funding to open every memorial in this country, and, and President Obama and the Democrats are blocking it. They're trying to play games, and, and the American people know they're trying to play games. They need to come together and fix this problem and, and stop holding our veterans hostage. Well, there are two types of memorials. There are the veterans' memorials and then the, the other memorials here. It's the veterans' one, though, that has gotten people mostly riled up, obviously, because of it. But how did it happen that on October 1st, um, no one realized in the Senate or the House that, uh, for instance, the death benefits weren't going to be paid? No one realized that? Well, just like we didn't realize that they were going to put doors around the World War II memorial. I mean, you, you had to actually build doors in the first place in order to lock them, and that's what they did. Uh, they're trying to make things as difficult as they possibly can be for the American people, and that's not right. And it's all a matter of priorities. It's a matter of uh, really a, a lack of respect coming from the top when we realize that uh, these political games are resulting in it being taken out on our veterans. So. The, pro the shutdown priorities reflect that lack of respect. Really, they reflect a lack of valor coming from our Commander-in-Chief. Do you think the Commander-in-Chief of the President was actually the one who said... The Commander-in-Chief, the President today, he could be here today standing up and saying, yes, we will tear down these barricades. We will allow our veterans to come in to their memorials because they have paid the ultimate price. They are the ones who have allowed us this freedom. Did you talk to the World War II veterans at all? Because they were here, we boarded the bus, and it was actually sort of interesting, these elderly gentlemen, they laughed at the concept of putting up a waist-high barrier to try to keep them out of uh, the memorial. Look, I, I mean, I was on that bus with you, and as you know, the, 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 those men were saying, listen, we, we took on the cliffs of Normandy. A barrier is not going to keep us out of this memorial. But, but you know, you, you asked about... The, the, the president's decisions, you know, his political operatives made the decisions initially, but President Obama personally has issued a veto threat saying he will veto funding to reopen this memorial. But he signed it. He signed it and he said he will veto funding to fund the VA, the Department of Veterans Affairs. Our vets should be above politics. You know, we've got a national website, fundourvets.com. You can see the president's written veto threat. That's wrong. And the commander-in-chief should be standing with our vets, not trying to use them as political pawns. That's not the proper approach. Senator Lee, um, the bill went from the House to the Senate to fund the vets for the death benefits and also to travel to receive the remains um, at Dover, quickly signed by the president. Um, you give him credit for that? Yes, absolutely. And it's an example of how we can work together to fund those areas of government as to which there is broad-based bipartisan consensus, especially in areas where there's no connection whatsoever to Obamacare. There's no reason why we can't backfill government, why we can't fund it on a step-by-step -step basis. They're telling us, in effect, unless you're willing to fund everything, we won't let you fund anything, and that doesn't make sense. Well, I guess the, the one issue that we can't uh, avoid is the fact that it took the American people being outraged generally for this to get, you know, front burner. And our vets have allowed us to be here today, standing up for our First Amendment rights so that we can express that outrage and that we can then positively impact the change that needs to take place so something like this never happens again.